Thank you for the invitation. And it is such a ple pleasure to be here to share some insights uh, from my experience of traveling to different countries. I lived in five countries. I was born uh, to the family of Russian German interpreters, but then in, in Germany, and then I grew up in Ukraine. I studied in Moscow and I came to the United States 20 years ago. Uh, so all the time I had to reinvent myself and to relearn the language which is spoken uh, so that I can express myself in the way I intended to be perceived. Um, I believe that language has power and that is what I, I want to convey to my students uh, and participants uh, of the seminars. Um, I read uh, um, a very interesting uh, saying that I say, my word is my wand. And it's really so. With the word, we can convey or make a portrait like an artist. If we are mindful what words we are using, what intonation can make a, a, a difference. So my latest um, professional interest is in um, uh, self-development uh, with the language and cultural and mental acuity. It means for people who study another language, understanding cultural, cultural nuances of communication can really make a difference and uh, shorten the period of time you can understand the language better. According to the study, understand, understanding these cultural uh, minute differences or unspoken uh, language and unspoken meaning can take up to seven years. But with the coach or with the person who knows the culture, it can take maybe a year or shorten this period of time so that you can understand better the language between the lines and also present yourself in the manner that um, that is effective and powerful. Um, I also uh, do interpreting and translation for King County and um, uh, some organizations for healthcare and promote the language of love and kindness because this language is uh, better perceived and can be used uh, for communication when people are more receptive to the message. So today I would like to share some techniques. They are not all, they are just a, a few, uh, some a, a short um, a representation of what can be done with just controlling or self-regulation with breathing, uh, meditation, and using the language mindfully. So let us see what we can do today. Uh, wait. Uh, so 20 years ago, I got um, an interesting um, review of the uh, teaching that I did. And several students, but specifically one, mentioned that um, that the process of learning English was not as scary as he expected, that uh, my method turned the English language learning from a scary tiger into domestic kitten. And that was a realization that creating a welcoming atmosphere and uh, creating some tools for students to relax and to enjoy the process can make a difference. So this presentation is the result of 20 years of experience in teaching uh, languages, including English, and application of the latest scientific knowledge of mind, body, and brain connection. 
So my task is to help students in self-regulation tool in their learning the language and uh, a new culture. So do you know uh, that uh, people uh, with, who have uh, a, a high level of self-confidence, they believe they can succeed and they do. They are more comfortable in speaking out or in starting new things and uh, to start a business and uh, it really makes them more successful. Um, these people who have this self-confidence, they believe that what they say is worth attention or they are worth of um, a good relationship and they are comfortable um, with speaking in another language and uh, including during the job interview or in public speaking. So according to numerous studies, speaking is directly connected to the level of self-confidence. That's why we chose this topic to help English language learners to uh, pay attention to this particular aspect in learning. So the objective of this presentation is to practice some tools that can calm your mind. And why do you think it is important? Who can give us some insights? Do you have any idea or maybe some experience? So can anybody speak up? Uh, yeah, Winnie here. Um... When I finished college last year, I had to go through a process, um, an interview. I did an interview at Amazon with seven people. Um, what helped me was doing a meditation before. Um, I love to kind of like calm myself down before and like be confident and believe in my skills. So that helped me to be really confident during the interview process just to you know, you got this, you work so hard, you study really hard so you can do this and don't overthinking too much um, going through the process and just be comfortable talking. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so our mind has a tendency to have too many thoughts and very often they are not encouraging. So to how to cool the brain and uh, how to calm mind uh, is very important. Then how to switch to positive thoughts about your abilities. This is very important. Can anybody comment on this? Why it is important to believe in yourself? Well, uh, Daniela here, I think that if you do not believe in yourself, you cannot expect other people to believe in yourself so I think that the first step is to uh, try to be self-confident to uh, be able to be the object of the trust of somebody else if I don't trust myself why should anybody else do that so mm -hmm. right does it come automatically or it takes some effort mental or emotional effort I think that it does. I mean, mm -hmm. for some people, maybe it's easier, but mm -hmm. I think that in general, um, you also need to, so sometimes we tend to fall into some kind of holes mm -hmm. where you start to self-pity yourself and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you know, I'm unlucky or this thing happened. These things happen only to me, uh, you know, those kind of negative thoughts. But I yes. think that you can actively say no, you know, get mm -hmm. out of the hole and say, that's mm -hmm. not true. Uh, yes. You know, I'm just, you know, in the, uh, maybe I'm tired. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm a little bit uh, afraid. And, you know, because, you know, being afraid is one of the, probably the main reasons why we tend to fall into, into these kind of protected holes. Because even yes. if it's negative, it, you know, even negativeness sometimes protects us, not only positiveness Wonderful. and so we want to, mm -hmm. to feel comfortable in uh, surrounded by negativity so yes. you need to jump out you know choosing to jump out and to be positive and to change your state of mind right thank you that is why i will show you some techniques how first to stop negative thinking right and then switch 
to the positive thinking about yourself. Mm -hmm. Then if you change the attitude towards speaking, do you believe that speaking is so dangerous that it will get you? It, it is dangerous? Sorry, oh, I don't understand exactly what you mean. So our uh, before speaking, uh, speaking is considered, according to another study, people are afraid of speaking more than they're afraid of death. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I have to be careful not to speak too much. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it depends uh, it, if it is public speaking, right? Or if you are a teacher and it is your first class, right? Or right. It, if it is a job interview or some something very important. So people rather die than <laughs> uh, start speaking. Uh, that's why, um, but it, it is connected to our old ret reptilian brain that thinks that it is a danger and that's why heart becomes pounding right and uh, it can be blood pressure can elevate but in fact speaking would not really harm you and if you consider it as a learning experience and another opportunity to present yourself or maybe uh, to make new friends or get a job then just by thinking about it, the, it rewires the brain and changes the chemistry in the body and calms you down. Isn't it interesting? Mm -hmm. So we also learn how about factors that are involved in speaking English and what it, does it mean to speak? And to pay attention to our intention and the language we use. Because the choice of words and also nonverbal expressions make a difference. So we can practice also um, some skills and positive attitudes in speaking with confidence. Uh, according to another very um, reputable study, self-confidence and positive attitude are related and they support each other and uh, to get into quiet mind is a uh, step number one to overcome fear so what would you suggest uh, we, we already heard that meditation can help us with this right or it can be counting up to 10 just counting and or breathing, and we will uh, practice breathing exercise. And when the mind is quiet, our brain works better because now the brain does not need to fight some negative thoughts. It can concentrate and focus on vocabulary or uh, the idea uh, that is um, emerges and wants to be presented. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this uh, self-regulation skills, including positive thinking about yourself, about the speaking event, and about people who are in the audience or in, uh, in your party, uh, can motivate you to, to do your best. So, uh, and a positive thought about your abilities is a very important component to speak uh, with confidence. So uh, let us speak about intention. Uh, why intention is so important? Um, if you want to scold somebody or to praise, Maybe you feel the energy is different. What would you rather do? To praise a person, right? So when you praise or express your um, appreciation or love, somehow it, the words pours from, from you like naturally. Maybe you uh, travel to a country where you did not speak the language but you wanted to express something positive, to say thank you or to 
pay a compliment, you find the word like naturally and your body language also helps and your uh, sight and um, uh, uh, how you look at people, uh, also smile, eye contact, because nonverbal communication is more than 80% of all communication. So intention is really is picked up by people. That's why maybe especially animals are very sensitive to it, right? You can say some silly words, but with a nice friendly intonation and the dog will wag the, the tail and will be very happy. So people feel this energy why you are saying this for self-promotion or you really want to help or do you want to manipulate somebody or you really want to share something new and interesting so the factors that are involved in creating a message um it is uh, your uh, um, image of self your feelings are very important. Do you feel joy of speaking or you feel fear? And if your body is relaxed or if your body tense, uh, whenever, when the body is relaxed, it is a better flow of the language. Uh, the brain has more oxygen and that's why the performance is better also. So let us uh, do our first activity. And it is just 30 second breathing exercise. And you can do it even before um, in an important speech or even uh, in the dialogue. If you are afraid of speaking, you can just breathe and it is not noticeable to anybody except you, but it can make a difference. Uh, so uh, we can put 30 seconds, but uh, I will show you first. And it can have two stages. First, silently, but then we can add some affirmations. So sit quietly, or you can even stand. And just breathe in and breathe out and relax yourself. The muscles of your face are relaxed, your shoulders are down and you breathe normally. Now it is, um, we will start a deep breathing and we will inhale and count one to four and then hold one, two, and release from the mouth, breathe out till six when all air is out. And we will repeat this silent three times. So release, okay. Breathe in, hold, breathe out with the mouth, And again, breathe in with your nose. Four, hold, one, two, breathe out with your mouth. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, breathe in. Four, and hold, one, two, breathe out, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now we breathe in confidence and peace of mind and power and breathe out fear, self-doubt, anything you don't want. Release it from out, from inside to outside. So breathe in confidence. 
hold and breathe out breathing out an uncertainty doubt fear and again breathe in confidence one two and breathe out fear Again, four, confidence, one, two, and breathe out fear. All right, come back. Now you should have energy to speak out and uh, to be comfortable. Uh, to address some questions and uh, if you have to speak. Do you feel more relaxed? Can you yep. feel it? I do. I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very relaxed. It, it really works wonders. Just that quick little activity of resetting the breath yeah. really just, mm -hmm. just calms the mind and makes you just feel so much, I don't know, less stressed. So relaxed. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so uh, it has a, a physical and chemical benefit. It has a benefit for the body brings oxygen. But also you did not have time to, to think some um, self-defeating thoughts. Right. And then you come into power. Yes, you are ready. All right. Now, our second exercise that we need actually to produce something to say, and it is very imp important to build on our belief that we are capable. And from this neutral position after the breathing exercise, we need to switch to the positive thinking about ourselves. And you can think about some good, something that you are proud of. You did something wonder, wonderful that nobody could do, but you could. So you're definitely are good at something. So can you add uh, something about yourself that describes yourself in a positive and powerful way? And it can be, I am peaceful, I am free of fear and anxiety. I am a creator of peaceful thoughts. I am enough, I am an interesting person, I am a wonderful teacher. When I teach, people really appreciate it and they listen and then write to me saying that it helped them to overcome their obstacles and achieve the dream. So now your turn. <laughs> uh, so can you, you can uh, chat or if you're now full of, uh, energy to uh, to speak out, please. You can add I am. Yeah, I can go. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Bobby. Uh, okay. Yes. Let me think. I think mm -hmm. I'm really optimistic uh, yes. mm -hmm. and confident. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yeah. That's Thank, you. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? Daniela, can you? Um, <laughs> the way I, I, you know, my positive aspects? Uh, uh, yes. What can you say about yourself? Just one sentence or one short. Uh, thing. <laughs> well, I think that I have a lot of courage. Yes, it's wonderful. All right. And Nicole, what about you? You are so creative and so wonderful. I already <laughs> wrote in the chat but nobody else followed. I wrote, I am confident and capable. And I'm thinking that in terms of speaking another language. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is really, really powerful to do. I think the more positive thinking and the more self-love we do, mm -hmm. the more other people love us as well. And Daniela mentioned that earlier when she was talking, she mentioned like, if I don't love myself, well, other people won't love me either. So, you know, 
Mm -hmm. smile, put out the positive attitude, the kind words, and that comes right back to you. Mm -hmm. So love yourself. I'm creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. I am creative and persistent. I like that. I am happy I can do it. I will be able to overcome my fears. Perfect. It's wonderful. So definitely, yeah. I agree here with Dr. Chuprina. Definitely mm -hmm. do your affirmations. When you get up mm -hmm. in the morning, you love yourself. You look in the mirror mm -hmm. and you tell yourself that you're awesome. You know, don't look in the mirror and say, oh my gosh, I look terrible. No, <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm beautiful. I'm so fortunate to, you know, to have this healthy body and, and, and to be beautiful and to be confident and happy. Yes. And more love and more happiness comes. Yes. I have a, a nice box of um, positive affirmations that I sometimes use uh, during the class. And there is one that says, the greatest gift you will ever receive is the gift of loving and believing in yourself. Yes. So this is this exercise. I hope that um, you understand the value of it. All right. So another aspect is uh, the, our words. What kind of words we choose? Uh, how we use our body language. Um, and um, our thoughts are also shown in the language and uh, body language. Usually when uh, people uh, are confident, they walk into the room like very proud of themselves, right? With the sh shoulders straight, right? Or like a queen. Right? Or like look at a gymnast or ballerina, right? And people who have some problems on their shoulders or they have self-doubt, it is usually stooping a posture. So that's why we need to pay attention to words, body language, and thoughts. Uh, and let it start with thoughts first, because these thoughts about ourselves and about people can give you a really different impact. Uh, how would you uh, speak? So mindful use of words towards yourself and towards others produce, um, produces cooperative energy. It means that you are willing to say something nice that will be reciprocated and people will listen and will respond um, with the intention, um, with the behavior that you expected. So. It's like a boomerang. Yeah. Usually. Yeah, we have it. Uh -huh. someone, have this. Yeah. I'm not confident. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Or somehow I cannot hear, is the sound is not very clear. That was Greta, I believe. Yes. Um, yeah, Greta, your sound is a little bit difficult to understand. Um, feel free to write in the chat. This is... Mm -hmm. All right, so do we have any questions or concerns? So maybe some comment that um, uh, you have similar uh, example that when you wanted, when you believe that your message is so important, you wanted to share a story or uh, tell uh, people about some one wonderful invention. Uh, so somehow it helps you to express yourself. So you, if you believe that you are important and your message is important and you're so valuable to be heard, uh, it probably, uh, at least to, to me and to people I know, it helps them to overcome this fear of speaking and present themselves, whether they speak to one person or to 100 or 1000. So any, any comments about that aspect? Okay, Gre Greta wrote here in the in the chat. She says her internet internet is not 
doing well tonight. Um, she was saying about the boomerang effect that the way we present ourselves is the way people see us. Yes. Yeah. yeah and I think that's that I agree as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I just say a word? Mm -hmm. I just yeah, wanted right. to underline uh, the part of what you said you have to measure, uh, measure in the sense to evaluate uh, the words you use. Mm -hmm. I think that it is fundamental uh, when you say love yourself. I think that uh, we should always measure the words we use also with ourselves. You know, when we do something wrong, oh, how stupid. Oh, how, no. Uh, Why do we do that? I mean, if we can concentrate and avoid that instinct, instinctive, you know, way to talk to ourselves, mm -hmm. um, I think it will, uh, you know, work a lot on our self-esteem. And mm -hmm. instead of saying, well, yeah, I dropped that object. I don't know. I did something that was not, uh, that I was not supposed to do, but maybe there is a reason. I don't know. I was tired. I was thinking about something else important. And I noticed that every time you uh, try to understand why, uh, you know, you did something not effective for yourself, uh, it, it helps a lot in the long term to understand that you are, you know, good, just to say a general word, but mm -hmm. that you are worth, worth. Yes. Also, we can rephrase how we think about ourselves as a, a foreign language speaker or second language speaker. Um, in many cultures, uh, one of the... Um, what is valued is modesty. And for Asian cultures and even for Slavic cultures, they would rather um, depreciate themselves rather than they will speak out to say, oh, I'm the best in it. So it is part of the culture, maybe part of the upbringing or even education. So I noticed that uh, many Americans who are raised with the praise and uh, uh, parents usually encourage them to do things by themselves and uh, tell them that mistakes uh, do not matter. This is how you learn. Children uh, grow up more um, confident in themselves. And even if they know just several words, they would say, oh, I speak Russian and say, wonderful. Let's speak Russian and say, oh, I know, just uh, thank you and goodbye, right? At the same time, a person from Russia or maybe China who would read and write and already teach would say, oh, my English is not good, right? So uh, rephrasing this, we can say that I am still working on my pronunciation or I am still attending classes, right? Or um, every day uh, is a learning experience for me. Uh, but uh, how can we avoid this depreciation of your skills and knowledge? Uh, learning another language, it's a tremendous work. And it involves so many aspects psychological and linguistic knowledge and it requires practice uh, and our thoughts can be either encouraging or defeating and these thoughts really can do miracles if we can uh, self-regulate and motivate ourselves and believe that we are capable we do speak a good language if you are here you can understand me, you understand Nicole, you understand others. So you do speak uh, good English, right? Uh, some people are afraid of their accents. You know, in America, people in the South speak different from the people in the North. Isn't it true, Nicole? <laughs> Can you understand? Absolutely. Yes, there are there are different um, dialects of, of English and American English, and we do mm -hmm. speak a little bit differently. So, um, you know, what is American English, right? What is English? And, and um, 
you know, I talk to people all the time and, and some people are just, um, I want to speak like an American. I'm like, well, why? <laughs> you know, as long as your speech is understandable and people are not struggling to, to communicate with you, that's the goal, right? You, you don't need to erase an accent. Um, the goal is just, can we communicate? communicate can we talk to each other we don't need perfection and sometimes that striving to be perfect really it takes a toll on the self-esteem and it just kind of gets in the way of of happiness you know always trying to be perfect and I don't know that we could ever be perfect as you know human beings is is it capable of being perfect at something but I think that we need to be competent you know we need to to be good communicators and um realize that you know having an accent is not a bad thing right yeah. as long as we're able to communicate and meet our goals that is what we should be trying to achieve yes uh and uh, nicole your role is so important of course certain sounds can change the meaning oh yes yeah like collection or, co or correction <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You were telling me something the other day and yeah. <laughs> that I don't know if it's uh, acceptable to repeat yeah. in a webinar, but <laughs> I chose another collection correction. Yes, I know you, yeah. you cho chose one that was pretty similar to that one, but it made me laugh anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, there are times that obviously, um, you right. know, pronunciation can affect mm -hmm. things. So yeah. to some extent, we need to, mm -hmm. I think, work towards again, competence, you know, being understandable, being intelligible, mm -hmm. having good communication, but not being overly focused on being perfect or sounding like a native or anything like that. Yeah. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, so. Oh, by uh, the way, um, mm -hmm. it is eight, oh, just about 820. Oh, it's, yeah. Okay. Just, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So besides uh, words that really are important, what words we use, um, sentence structure also uh, plays a big role. And that's how formal and informal language languages are different, right? We can say, um, sit down or will you sit down please right or uh, do you mind if you sit here for a while right so depending how we structure there is a different intention and different um i would say intimate or, or approximation between people how you show with your language right and usually People are more polite with strangers or people who are older uh, or see in seniority and with pals, with friends. It is more informal language, which is shorter. Um, however, tone and intonation uh, and pauses are very important. So I wanted, uh, there was, uh, we did not even do jam even, right? And it, it, we have only 10 minutes to finish. Oops. No, we have until nine o'clock. Oh, you still have nine. plenty of time. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. we have, okay. you still have 40 more minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. So I wanted to show one. Oh, it's not here. I thought I, I put it here. If it is tone and intonation, can you practice, can somebody be brave and volunteer to say, uh, sit down here, please, with different intonation and tone. And let us see what, can, uh, what it implies. Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, please. All right. Wait, different intonations, right? Yes, different nations. Okay. So say, okay. for example, three, three different ways. Sit down here, please. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me try. Sit down here. <laughs> All right. Okay. 
Sit down here, please. All right. All right. Sit down here, please. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Sit down here, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. All right, all right. So, Nicole, would it be correct if I say that if we put please in front, it would be completely different? Please sit down. It's not so much the word order change, uh -huh. but your tone. Your uh -huh. tone was more forceful right now. Like, mm -hmm. please sit down. It's more authoritarian. Like, do this. Mm -hmm. Don't ask questions. Yeah. Like that kind of forceful down tone that you had. Please yes. sit down. Yes. Versus, um, can you please sit down? Mm -hmm. When you're kind of like more like in an up tone, yes. it's more friendly and mm -hmm. less um, threatening. Yes. Um, usually the police or maybe in the court, they say, please sit down, mm -hmm. but they put please in front. And if it is um, mm. uh, verbally, it is polite, but usually it is with authoritarian voice and tone, right? Mm -hmm. But when, um, sit down here, please, mm -hmm. right? or sit down Sit down, please. Right? Sit down, please. Oh, you don't stand here. So it, you can um, show some impatience or um, kindness to offer somebody to sit. So this is intonation and tone that can change the meaning, right? Or your intention, what you are saying, right? Can I add something here yes, for a moment? Please. Mm -hmm. A lot of times what comes up um, for people who are learning English, especially for or from other cultures, they don't realize the effect of having like questioning mm -hmm. tones a lot. Even, even mm -hmm. native speakers do this. Mm -hmm. When the things they say appear to be questions, they're like going up, mm -hmm. it shows mm -hmm. kind of uncertainty and insecurity and lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. So when everything you say is with an up tone, yeah, it's showing that you're not confident in yourself. And especially mm -hmm. if you're going to a job interview or if you're at work, you, you want to show some con confidence in that you know what you're talking about and not always be doing uptones. Now, some of you are probably thinking, what, what, what are they talking about uptones? Um, like if I ask you the question, what, let's see, what, what's the capital of let's see, what's the capital of Oregon? <laughs> Oregon. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know the answer? Yeah. Okay. Portland. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, did you say that with mm -hmm. like certainty or with like, uh, if you're not sure, you're, Portland? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You kind of go up, but if you're yeah. certain, you're like Portland? Yeah. Capital of Oregon? It's actually Salem, but Salem, huh? <laughs> the capitals always tend to be these cities that people are like, what? What is Salem? <laughs> They're not the big known cities. I was just trying to think of one because we're always kind of confused. People are like, what's the capital of California? And people say, Los Angeles? <laughs> like, oh no. Or usually it's with an uptone, right? Mm -hmm. Los Angeles, right? You're kind of going up and it's, it's showing like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Sacramento. Notice I'm down. Mm -hmm. Downtown means I'm I'm certain. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. very good. Now about pauses. Pauses are very important. And there is a misconception that um, being fluent in a language uh, means being f a fast speaker, which is not the case, right? To be fluent is um, uh, to be comfortable with vocabulary, expressions, um, to be able to um, have a good conversation that without looking in the dictionary all the time. But pauses are very important and uh, you don't need to rush. Actually, it is um, more difficult to understand um, when uh, the person speaks very fast. That's why it's better to speak normally and uh, uh, with um, 
some pauses and if you need to think and give yourself this 30 seconds breathing, you can say well and then think and collect the thought, what you're going to say and breathe and then respond. If you don't know the answer, you can say, oh, let me think. I will come back to you tomorrow. I need to check uh, something or look up. So it's also all right not to know the answer. Uh, and actually people, um, listeners respect you even more if you uh, tell them that you don't know rather than invent something that is not true. Right? Um, so nonverbal communication. Eye uh, contact in the United States is very important, especially if you go to a job interview. In schools, some um, students who come from Korea or from Latin America, where the direct eye contact is considered to be a confrontation, uh, they can be perceived as a, um, uh, deceiving or they're not trustworthy. There was such a, a belief that if a person is honest, the person looks in the eyes. But this is such a, a belief in this Anglo, uh, Anglo-Saxon um, culture. Um, Nonverbal communication also includes gestures. Uh, Russian speakers, use a lot of gestures and their, their tonality is uh, fallen. And I was a witness of one case when the police was called, uh, when two Russian friends were speaking, but a lot of gestures, but it was perceived as they were fighting. But they spoke in their language and the, though the language was friendly to um, the ear, to another ear, it's, it sounded as if they are fighting because the tonality of the language is different. The Russian language is different than um, English. And very often Russian speakers are perceived as rude because they have a tendency to give some even statements look like a command or sound like a command. So we need to uh, take it in consideration if, if we invite somebody to come in or to sit down to have this uprising tonality, right? Please come in, sit down, please. Yeah. Instead of come in, sit down. Right? <laughs> So let's uh, speak about something else. So like facial expressions, posture, gestures, eye contact. We talked about it. Uh, now a second um, activity. How meditation can prepare us uh, better for um, a speaking event or just uh, to relax also and to be more comfortable with yourself. So now let us um, uh, just concentrate on this um, activity and it will prepare us for a speaking activity. Okay. All right, so this exercise, it's a speaking exercise for fluency. And you will see that how it is easy and you can do it. It is called a gem technique or just a minute speaking. Um, so um, I want to ask people to say, um, did, uh, did it help? Did this um, exercise help them to see themselves as capable? Because usually if we are good at something, it can give uh, can give us an impetus and uh, feel that we are capable and we are good. Okay, so uh, 
what do you think uh, very um, uh, brief or you can put in the chat did it help you to see yourself as capable and uh, were you able to speak for one minute without uh, any problem um let's see definitely yes we have a definitely yes, yes. from talita mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you guys can unmute yourself also if you'd like to speak yeah. yes yes <laughs> this yeah. helped me to see myself more capable and also you know um, I was trying to not be so um, nervous or not confident so yes it did help okay we're getting some other yeses indeed absolutely really good um, we have six minutes okay all right so what else um, so um, I wanted to show then um, what inspired me uh, for this presentation and what are good resources. Crossroads have... Um, oh, are you sharing your screen at the moment? Ah, uh, I'm not. No, we're not no. seeing your screen. Okay. Can I just, you know, I don't know if I have time to say goodbye afterwards, but I have to uh. go minutes oh all right uh, can so, you just say bye yes. and then yes can you see five minutes yeah <laughs> five minutes <laughs> and there are some others about how to say it or uh, guide uh, to stress reduction also emotional intelligence is one of the skills that is really important nowadays and all the skills for self-regulation and it is really very easy to do with breathing, uh, with the meditation and uh, self-talk that you are capable, you are good, you are enough, you did it before so you can do uh, better and better with practice. And uh, if you allow me, uh, I will show, I will run my uh, short video to stay in touch if you have more questions or would like to know uh, more about cultural acuity and uh, some uh who registered and we have your email we will send you uh, the uh, handouts with summary and uh, resources okay. yeah. do you have any questions or any concerns nope thank you for your presentation <laughs> yes. thank you thank you that was great thank you, that was great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, do you think you will use it? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yes. For sure. Yes. Those are good tips. All right. So, what did you learn today? How can somebody summarize? What did we learn today? Be more confident and trust in ourselves and skills. Okay. Wonderful. And how we can do this? Relax. 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 Yes. Bye. Thank you so much, Daniela. Thank you for your contribution. It was a pleasure. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Daniela. Yes. Bye. Right. Bye.
Yes. Uh, you, Larissa, there was one thing um, that we talked about the other day, but I think you didn't mention is um, mm -hmm. seeing your listener as um, um, well, no, uh, assuming the people or person you're talking to is mm -hmm. a nice person that wants to be helpful and wants to understand you. And they are not your enemy or your competition, but they're actually your friend who wants to understand and is supporting you. And seeing the listener mm -hmm. or the other side is a supportive mm -hmm. body rather than somebody who wants you to fail. And I think when we take mm -hmm. into consideration that most people want mm -hmm. others to succeed, mm -hmm. that we come at it in a more, I think, peaceful and affirmative um, approach to our conversation where we know the other person is supportive and wants to help us. And so yeah. we feel calm and confident going into the conversation. Yes, very good. Thank you. There is this sentence in summary and also okay. in the beginning, but uh, we did not focus I on it. I know. I, I remember you mentioning it earlier yes. when we talked, and I thought it was a really good thing to remind people that um, yes. don't, be, don't be so nervous because other people are there to, to support you. I mean, I think most people are really kind and generous. So going in, you know, expecting that makes yeah. things much easier. Very good point. Yes, thank you for reminding us. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Nicole, for so much for organizing and uh, preparing this wonderful um, uh, forum for us to share our ideas and uh, to see and uh, to meet each other. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think this topic is really, really useful. And it is definitely a blend of not mm -hmm. only, you know, helping people improve their English, but also helping improve in, in all areas of their life. And something we very, very much need to, I think, return to mm -hmm. as a civilization where we mm -hmm. need to realize that we are in control of our own reality and our mindset mm -hmm. and we can kind mm -hmm. of control the outcome of things if we have a better attitude so I thought this was uh, definitely very valuable information for people to hear and and I appreciate you you taking the time to to put this together and you know to speak to the audience too so I appreciate everybody for giving me opportunity to put this together that uh, it is a very big topic mm -hmm. however it's very easy, right? It very is. Simple, simple steps. And um, it can really change the life and change the situation for it the is. best. It is. It's so simple, but so many people are, are not aware of this and have never been taught, you know, self-regulation, calming and being at peace and mm -hmm. changing your attitude, really change everything, changing your words, changing your thoughts, changes everything. Yeah. And being grateful, right, and mm -hmm. accepting, it's very important. So I am really gr grateful to you and to the audience mm -hmm. for your time, your attention, and your interest.